Hi, and welcome to this video on getting started with School AI. School AI has become my absolute favorite platform for students in the classroom. And I've been using AI with students for almost two years, and this has risen to the top. So let's go and look around at School AI. Once you sign in, you're gonna be asked some questions, and then you're, you're gonna to get to this dashboard. A lot of people don't know what to do when they first get to this dashboard, so I wanna give you some help. So first we have these three boxes. This is where you are going to concentrate most of your effort when you're in School AI. And this is the student facing side of School AI, which provides AI experiences for kids that are safe, that are customized and that have important guardrails on them so that students don't go off task or have the AI just give them answers. Much different than other experiences that I'm seeing on other AI platforms where students are simply getting answers back. So before we move on to these three boxes, I do want to point out that School AI also has tools for teachers like creating a lesson plan or worksheet. You can click around in here. Also chatbots to help with Common Core or whatever teaks, whatever your standards are. And then you can come down here to become an insider. And if you do that, you're going to get access to the paid for version of School AI for free. So if you really like this tool, you can start there. And the paid for version gives you more interactions, but it also has a layer of safety and data safety that is really important that we want to use. So here we are at the dashboard and we have these three experiences that we are going to focus in on. The first one I have teachers do is to go in and find a space. Here you will see that you could create a bell ringer activity, an exit ticket acti activity, video explorer. You can give kids access to tutors when they need them. But down here is where I find the most value. There are featured collections, which we'll get to in a moment, and there's also spaces created by teachers. So I wanna see all these spaces. When I go to these spaces, I can kind of get an idea of how other teachers are using this tool. I'm gonna to head back up here actually, and I'm gonna to go to opinion. And I'm gonna see if there's anything that would help kids do their opinion writing essay. So I don't know exactly what these are going to do, so I wanna open one up. And when I do that, it's going to say, this interactive space is designed to assist fifth graders in refining their informational writing abilities. Through personalized feedback, students will learn to evaluate, improve their composition based on clear rubric, all of these things, that looks good. So the first thing as a teacher I wanna do before I send this out to students is I wanna start a preview. I wanna see what it asks me. And it says, hello, I'm excited to help you improve your opinion writing. Could you please share what, you're, what you've currently written? Now, if kids are at that stage in the writing process, this is gonna help give them feedback to create those clear essays. But I haven't started yet, so I'm gonna tell the AI, I have not started yet and see if it will help me dig into coming up with an opinion uh, writing idea. It says, no problem, let's get started together. What's the topic or opinion you'd like to write about? Once you have that, we can outline ideas. I want to write about Taylor Swift. And it's going to come back and say, oh, great choice. And then what's your main opinion about Taylor Swift? Why do you feel this way? Can you provide specific examples? Let's begin with your main opinion. What do you think about Taylor Swift? So it's not coming back and saying, oh, you could write about her era's tour. You could write about her lyrics. You could write about her as a woman, a powerful woman. It doesn't give answers. It asks the students to dig deeper into this experience. Well, based on this, I think I like it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to launch this for my students. And to launch it, I click this blue button and it's gonna give me a link that I can add to Google Classroom or I can just use this space code and it gives me this link that I can put into Schoology or Canvas, whatever I want. So now I'm gonna put this uh, link into my LMS and students are going to interact with it. When they do, this is what's going to happen. I'm gonna take you to another space where people have interacted with opinion writing so you can see what that looks like. 
So here we are in an opinion writing AI space that was created for students. These are actual teachers coming in and trying this out, but I want you to see what it looks like on the teacher side. Now that I've invited students in, they're interacting in the space, and I begin to get a summary of what students are interacting and what's happening. So it says right here with Shay, student expressed the importance of creating positive environment for friends by ensuring everyone feels that they belong, allowing them to choose activities. And if I keep going down, I'm gonna see that Faith, this student highlighted the importance of having the 22 hat worn by Taylor Swift, good, good for her. Um, and I can start to see all the interactions the students are having with these little summary statements. It helps keep me kind of in the know about what these students are asking. I can see here there's a brain uh, emoji and most of these emojis will indicate where the students are in the process. This says student recognizes that engaging in reading, sports and healthy eating on extras day off can boost brain power. So I can go over to her and say, so you're into boosting brain power. Can you tell me more? And I can now help her with this opinion piece. I can also, if there's a case where a student might be doing something I don't want them to do, I can go to these three dots and I can view that chat. I can see what they're asking the AI and what the AI has responded. So that's really nice. I feel very good about that because if a student goes home and uses something like Gemini or ChatGPT, I have no idea about that experience or the conversation that they're having. So this is really strong. I wanna go back to the spaces and I wanna go back to discover and talk about how I might launch a space. So let's say I wanna have the kids interact with George Washington. Again, I'm gonna take you through this. I'm gonna start the preview, see what happens and see what George Washington asks. So it says, greetings, I'm George Washington, the first president of the United States. Did you know I, I never actually lived in the White House? It was built uh, it wasn't built until after my presidency. Curious, what do you already know about me? Well, I know. And so the student is having a conversation at this point with George Washington, not just getting answers, which most AI models do right now. They just provide answers. They might talk about George Washington, but there's no interaction happening with the student. And this is where I have fallen in love with School AI because it lets students start to think about content through the questioning activities that it promotes, not just by getting answers. So let's go back and, and it's taking a minute to respond. By the way, I wanna talk about that it's taking a minute to respond. It's doing that because it's checking the data it's providing. Before giving students an answer, it's looking at the data through five factors and making sure that it is in fact correct and that it's not giving the students any misinformation, which I have found it not to do. I have found other apps do give misinformation and, and it's been so bad that I've had to stop using some other student facing AI. So it says, certainly I was married to Martha Curtis. She was a widow with two children when, she, when we married in 1759. What do you think makes a good partnership in marriage or friendship? And now it's asking questions. They're gonna go back and forth. As they unpack some information about George Washington, they're gonna get to know him on a deeper level. Really inspiring critical thinking activities happening here. Okay, so as I stated before, we're gonna go back and look at those spaces. So we were in Discover, we found a space, we launched it with students, but what if I wanna create my own space? Well, I have two options. I can do a quick sidekick, or I can come over here to create a space. So I open this create a space, it takes a second to load, but then it's gonna give me an opportunity to call my space something. So I'm gonna go with opinion writing. And um, I'm gonna just gonna do an intro activity. So I'm gonna put that to remind myself. And then I'm gonna say, help students, uh, help students come up with an idea for their opinion writing. Keep them on task and make sure not to write any part of that for them. So, I could start there. I'm probably gonna get want to get more in depth, 
But one of the things that I can do is I can go to the standards. So maybe I'm doing this for fifth grade, I'm doing it for California, there are lots of other states that I can go to, and I can find the standard for fifth grade that I'm trying to address. So here I'm trying to address these two. I can add that to the training that the bot is thinking about as it's answering questions. I can then come down here and generate a cover image. And then I, while this is optional, I can put a description for myself for later and then also a description for the students to let them know what this thought pot partner experience is going to be like. Back here, we're still with these three boxes. We've now done this discover a space and found some. We've done create a space. And the sidekick really is just a place where I can create one really quick. Maybe my students are having trouble understanding something. So I'm gonna go to a sidekick. And when I do that, all I have to fill out is the prompt part. I don't have to give it a title. I don't have to give it standards, none of those things. So I would just put in here what the, the prompt that I want the AI to use, and I can get that quickly out to my students. I'm only doing that if it's something quick I want to get out. One last thing, when we come into find a space, and I'm gonna come down here to Maureen, I love her spaces that she's created. She does a really good job. I'm going to find one that I like here and just see how she did this. I'm gonna look for uh, parts of an atom. And if I wanna know how she did her prompt, all I have to do is go to these three dots and remix it. When I remix it, I can see exactly what she put in for her prompt. This I can either cut and paste. Well, now that I'm remixing it, it's become mine and I can change some of this, but I can look what she has and I can add to it. Maybe I want something else. And now I can save and launch this new space that I've added to. But most importantly, I can see how she prompts her space so I start to learn how people are prompting. And I can do that again. I'm gonna go back and just show you. By finding a space, I went to Maureen. I'm gonna do it again with a different one, with order of operations. I open it up and I go to these three dots. And when I do that, when I go to remix this, I can see exactly how she did this. Look at this for order of operations. It simply says, provide guidance and feedback for students on practice problems for order of operations. It's a seventh grade class, avoid giving the correct answer, instead give guidance and suggestions. That's all she did. It's not this big, long thing to create this space. So this is School AI. Focus on these three boxes. Find a space that you like, launch it with students, and watch as the summary statements come in on your side. You can have these available for students who might need a thought partner for certain parts of a lesson cycle. This is not meant to replace the teacher. This is meant to be a yes and situation because it is safe, there are guardrails, and it helps students get the help they need when they need it. So I hope you'll love School AI as much as I do.